Hello, welcome to Bible Scribe again. Giants in the Bible, huh? No way! How could that be? Uh, you know, we've probably heard a lot about this. People started talking about this in recent years a lot more than in the past. And so there's this talk about where there are giants mentioned in the Bible. Uh, and we're going to explore that topic tonight. And we're going to explore it not only in scriptures, but in a lot of different places. So what I'm trying to do tonight, give you a short but a broad overview of all the different places that giants are actually mentioned in the Bible and in ancient literature and where these stories all come from. And so let's, let's dive into that a little bit. In the Bible, you probably know the story of David and Goliath, right? So David the young Israelite slays the giant Goliath. Uh, so you are aware the Bible talks about Goliath and he is a giant. He is listed in the scriptures as being about 12 to 13 feet tall. His uh, spear, if I remember correctly, was measured at about 20 feet. Of course, the Bible uses the, the unit of cubit, but that is uh, essentially about a foot and a half or so. So we can make those measurements and at least come up with a, a good estimation of how long those distance, those uh, lengths were. And so the Bible definitely mentions David and Goliath. However, there is another passage in Genesis 6 that talks about a, um, the giants. And there's also things in other cultures. So we will get to what's in the Bible and actually read that. But I also wanted to mention that a lot of other cultures have either direct stories, historical narratives of giants in their, their writings, their ancient writings, or in their legends. So, for instance, Sumerian culture. Sumerian culture is rife with um, tales and records of angel-type beings coming down from heaven and producing, by intermarrying with humans, a race of giants. Uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh is one of those writings, those stories that record some of that, Gilgamesh himself being a giant. In the Egyptian culture, we see, if you just look at Egyptian paintings, uh, the hieroglyphs and the paintings on the insides of the pyramids and different structures, you'll notice that a lot of their worshipped gods or characters, for, for instance, like Horus with the dog head, I believe, or Isis and all their different characters that some had a dog head, some had like an alligator head, um, but not only those, but their pharaohs were always depicted in ancient ancient drawings as being a lot larger than their servants, than the other people around them at their throne room uh, and in places like that. So there's a lot of that going on in Egyptian uh, history as well. Now also, in America, the American Indians, the natives of the North and South America, had a lot of tales and of course they didn't write most of their history but it was passed down by word of mouth these stories of how there were races of giants all over North and South America and how their tribes at one point in their history had waged war against tribes of giants to try to wipe them from the land because they were cannibals and they were eating the people. Um, then we have early American explorers who also recorded and this is actually in their journals of when they brought ships over from Europe and Spain and the places like that in the time of like Columbus Columbus they would talk about going by islands and seeing giants running around on the shores and making motions to them and stuff like that in fact some of them even wrote about times where they went inland and stayed with races of giants while they were inland. So these are actually legitimate stories recorded by explorers in the Americas. And so those are things you can just get and read, and it's amazing. Um, there are thousands and thousands of recorded cases of people digging into the ground and finding the skeletons of giants. Skeletons with bones that are way larger than could be of modern man. For instance, like just a leg bone, a femur that's like four feet long uh, and stuff like that. And 
A lot of these things have been found in the Americas when they have been found, however. Uh, a lot of times they are kind of scooped up by scientific institutions, namely the Smithsonian Institute. And a lot of times in the past they had been just hidden, taken away, and no one's ever seen them again. Uh, and there's a long story behind that. There were certain curators at the Smithsonian that had an agenda of doing this kind of thing uh, for their own reasons. Um, and so that was a, an interesting story. You can read about that too. Uh, but to move forward a little bit too, in all in lots of places around the world, for instance, in Baalbek in Lebanon, there is a temple there, uh, and it is made with stones that are so big that modern people have examined them and decided that they don't know a way that we in our modern times even know how to move those stones anymore. We're talking about stones that are in the ranges of 20 to 60 tons. They are big, if you can imagine, just huge rectangular blocks of granite or other types of stones, marble, um, that are bigger than school buses. That's what we're talking about. And, and generally in modern times, we don't have ways of transporting or moving that kind of thing, cutting it the way that it was cut in those times. And of course, the speculation is that there were giants in the history of those buildings that created them, that took the stones and were able to move them because, of course, you had 50 giants on you know, 15-foot people moving a stone. It's a lot easier than if you had 100 six foot people <laughs> moving a stone. So anyway, that's a little speculation, but there's also that. Uh, and then, you know, aside from the Bible, aside from a lot of other writings in ancient history, um, from other cultures, but there is the Jewish culture, from, of course, which the Bible is about, but there's other Jewish writings, for instance, the Jewish Talmud and the um, Midrash, and all the different Jewish legend and story that has come with their the Judea, uh, Judaistic belief system through the centuries, even from the time of Christ and before, way before, uh, there are a lot of books, including, like I mentioned, the Talmud and Mishnah, Mid Midrash, that talk about giants in the history. And so... That is, um, that is just a few good examples, though, of the fact that the, the giant narrative is baked into culture all around the world. And it's not, uh, it's not just legend. Like I said, there's been skeletons found. There's historical records where things have been talked about. So it's kind of undeniable, although a lot of people that hear about it are just dismissive because it sounds so fantastical. How could there be a person... For instance, like Goliath in the Bible, that was actually 13 feet tall. Um, it just the thought of it is something we're not used to thinking about, or, or obviously we don't see people that size, so we just kind of typically humans just dis dismiss the stories. But that's a little naive because there's so much evidence out there that giants did in fact exist. Uh, so what I want to do now is go to the Bible. We'll go to Genesis chapter six. And we're going to read the narrative in the Bible that actually talks about the start of why we had giants on the earth at all. So if you want to read with me, I'm here in Genesis 6. This will be verses 1 through about 8. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men they were fair, and they took wives of them, all of which they choose. Now I'll stop right there quickly because I want to mention this phrase, the sons of God in Hebrew is called the B'nai Ha'elohim. B'nai meaning the progeny and Elohim meaning essentially a divine creature or a spiritual creature. Um, and in this case, this instance, it is Ha'elohim, is the God, the, the highest God. So this is talking about God, Jehovah. And the sons of God at this time and throughout all Jewish writings, including the Book of Enoch, Jubilees, Jasher, the Bible, uh, all the way through some of the prophets in the Bible, not just in Genesis, uh, the sons of God, B'nai Ha'elohim, is always about angels. 
And so we know that this here is referencing angels just by studying the Bible, but also by studying a lot of other ancient Jewish literature. It's always about angels. The Dead Sea Scrolls, when they were found in the 1950s, confirmed this as well. There are other writings in there that talk about them as well, and it is the angels. So here it says, the angels saw daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. So there was this group of angels that saw human women and were so enamored that they decided they were going to take these women as their wives. And the Lord said at this time, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now this statement here, I have another video about this, and it is about the hundred and twenty years that God mentions here. And what he is really saying, he's talking to Moses. And at this time when he says this, there is 120 years until he sends the flood upon the earth to wipe out all of humanity, including what we're going to hear about with these giants in just a second. So this is what this 120 years means. He's saying to Moses, I'm going in 120 years to send a flood, essentially. I'm going to, I'm going to fix this problem. But it says in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same, the children, became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So when it's talking about this, number one, this word giants, again, is nephil, nephilim, is the plural of that word, but... Uh, it means giants, and it's again another word that's all through ancient literature. Always means um, the giant races, uh, and there were many giant races. You'll see further in the Bible, like Goliath, he was of the Philistines, but there were giant races in the Anakim. The um, the Canaanites were mostly giant. The uh, Amorites. A lot of the different races mentioned in the Bible, that especially the ones that essentially Joshua and as leader of the Jews was told by God to go wipe them out. It was because they were giants. They were offspring of angels with humans. And this was never meant to happen. It was because of these angels' sin, essentially their decision to leave their estate, what they had been given to do by God, and come to earth and mate with human women to create this race that was not meant to be. And so uh, there were these different different races of giants at that time after this all happened. Uh, and verse 5 here, I'll just continue a little bit. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth. It saddened him. It grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man from whom, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Because everything was being corrupted by this uh, you know, hybridization of human women with angels. And so that created the giants. And if we read also in other books uh, that are ancient and went along with the scriptures in the Jewish libraries, for instance, Book of Enoch, Book of Jasher, Book of Jubilees, they all confirm the same story. And, and it's good to read those because you'll get a little more insight too. Uh, the book of Enoch particularly it tells the entire story of the angels that made this decision to come and take human wives, and then they bore giants. And so it's, it's very interesting to read those stories. They flesh out this, where in Genesis 6, it's very short, it's brief. Uh, it just wasn't treated in a holistic way, just because, it, you know, to the narrative of the Bible, not that important. But also, the writer of Genesis knew the story, and it was... It was regular to him. It was normal. So these references to the people that read this originally, obviously, uh, made 100% sense. They knew exactly what he was talking about. It's just in our modern time, you know, we're not used to this, this wording and the way it's translated from Hebrew into English, etc. So that all being said, uh, there are a couple theories about this passage that are you know, try to explain this in a way where it takes giants out of the picture. Uh, there's one called the Sethite theory and one called the human leader theory. The Sethite theory being that when it says sons of God, this was actually espoused by Augustine in the uh, 400-ish time frame AD. 
And it says that this group called the sons of God was actually the, the descendants of the line of Seth, Adam's son. And it, it's convoluted because, you know, it, I'm not sure I can understand and explain it completely to you. But it's just a way to try to get around having giants because that's too supernatural and people didn't like that idea, you know, and continually don't like that idea to today. And yeah, for some reason, the supernatural just kind of scares people. They back off from it. Um, and so that's one theory that the sons of God were not fallen angels, that they were the sons of the line of Seth and that they came to the daughters of men and bear children to them. And... You know, it's it's strange, too, to think that because actually Seth of Adam's sons was one of the good ones. And his line is uh, is the good line. So it's strange to say that they came and they produced a fallen progeny of, you know, giant men or, or whatever. And, and so it just kind of, to me, doesn't... I mean, there's no way to really defend that position. The other position is that the sons of God here means... Uh, kind of like leader, uh, leader humans, leaders like kings, and that you know it's another way to describe it to try to take the supernatural aspect out of it and say there weren't giants, but there were, there were giants in Genesis six. There's legends of giants all over the world and fallen angels, and there is also uh, been found thousands and thousands of giant skeletons buried in the earth all over the world. So you really can't ignore that evidence. Uh, I think these explanations now, especially in the modern time frame where we have been able to discover and pull together all this information from all over the world, both physical information and historical information, it's kind of silly to make these arguments now. And uh, so wanted to share this with you. Now to give you an idea of how many other places you can go and learn about giants in ancient texts, I mean, here's a list I'm going to pop up. So the Watchers is the name that is given in the Book of Enoch for the fallen angels, and the Nephilim is their offspring, meaning the giants. So that's what the word Nephilim means. Uh, and here you go, you know, here's, here's references in the Bible. You know, Genesis, Numbers 13.33, Deuteronomy, there's a couple of references to, to giants, Og of Bashan and Goliath. Second Samuel mentions Goliath, of course, when it's telling the story of David and his slaying of Goliath. Joshua, it's mentioned, because there's the races that Joshua is told to go in and fight and do battle for the Lord. Uh, and Ezekiel mentions it. Jude in the New Testament mentions the uh, fallen angels and what they did. And so that's a bunch of places in the Bible itself that talk about giants. Now, to go past that, the book of Enoch, these are all references that talk about the giants. And in fact, the, the whole narrative of the first part of the book of Enoch, these first 20 chapters or so, is about the fallen angels coming and then having offspring of giants with the women on earth. Uh, so there's first Enoch, second Enoch, there's a portion that's about the giants themselves specifically. The book of Jubilees, here's a bunch of references. I can put all these references in the description notes for the video, so you can definitely get back to any of these you want to read about. And that's what this, this video is for, to just hit these high points so you know where you can go to learn more, okay? The Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs is an early Christian writing. The Testament of Reuben, uh, in, I think that's verse 5 and 18 through 20, I believe it has just one chapter, but it's the Testament of Reuben. In the historian Josephus book, The Antiquities of the Jews, you have the mention of giants in the history of the Jews, both in chapter 1. 72, 75, chapter 3, footnote 11, he mentions it. And in, in book 5, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, um, you'll notice the way the numbering works once you get in there. But uh, that's a good place to hear about it, too. Philo, he was a historian of the early, uh, I guess, I think, first century, that time frame. And he has a commentary on the giants, an, an entire commentary just on the giants. And uh, there's that for you. And he also has questions and answers. He did a commentary on Genesis. And so that also, of course, mentions the giants because of Genesis 6. Uh, another work of Phileo Judaeus right here. And so I will put that again, too, in the, the links. 
book of Jasher. Book of Jasher chapter 4 talks about this same incursion by the fallen angels where they produce giants. There is a book called the Fragment of Noah and this was actually part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, it's mentioned here too. Um, and so this fragment tells the story of Noah's birth and when Lamech and his wife had Noah, Noah it says in this text that he glowed with light from his body and because he was special. He was special from God. He was special and he was sent to save the human race essentially from the coming destruction of the flood. But apparently he was really special. He was glowing and because of that Lamech thought that he was a Nephilim, that, he, that his wife had uh, essentially had adultery with a fallen angel to produce Noah. And it's very interesting. This is in the Dead Sea Scrolls, so we know it is, you know, at least hundreds of years old before the time of Christ. Uh, and likely it dates as old as anything in the Jewish writings, can, like Genesis, like Job, like Book of Enoch, uh, all of that. So anyway, that's a really interesting uh, thing to read if you've never heard that story. Uh, I have this reference mentioned, Karatepe. I, I can't even remember uh, what book or writing that is. I think it's from an ancient culture of the Middle East. Uh, I'm, but if you look it up, I know I've done that before. There you go. Another Ammonite inscription of the 9th century found in Jordan. It talks about the same phrase, the B'nai Ha'elohim, sons of God, the angels that came down and uh, produced the giants. And then in the Aramaic Targum of the Pentateuch. So this is, again, the Targum of the Jewish uh, religion. And so it's ancient stuff that has come through their tradition, through their legend. And it is the Targum, which is kind of, uh, it's like their, their rabbinic commentaries on the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible. And so, all that being said, that's, that's a smattering of different places that you can read things about giants. And actually, to be honest, there's a lot more. This was just a start on a list that I started putting together. And I will again put this in the notes for you to grab on hold to and start reading through some of this yourself. So all that being said, you know, there's just so much evidence that the giant narrative was a legitimate story. There's even a... Um, I believe it's a Sumerian writing that is written, is proposed to be have, have been written by a giant. And it's, I think it's called the Book of Og, which is like in the Bible, Og of Bashan. Um, but there's just so many things when you start looking at ancient literature that talk about the giant races. And so it's kind of silly to ignore it. If you've never heard of it, I know it sounds outlandish, it sounds crazy. Giants, no way, but actually there is a ton of evidence. Oh, I wanted to at least show you a few books, so let me switch over here to this view. I'll show you a few books. Like, here's a book. This is by actually a, a, a medium. I believe Elizabeth Clare Prophet is a medium, so I wouldn't recommend, you know, learning from her, but she even recognizes that these fallen angels came and had giant offspring so she wrote a book and I picked it up at a used bookstore and I read it. Here is a uh, you know the book of Enoch Jubilee Jasher you can get this uh, online I think I got it at Amazon but you can get this many places you can get them separate or all together like this uh, and those have all the stories of the giants in them. You know I don't I didn't mention it but mythology Greek and Roman mythology is full of what? It's full of the Titans and the Olympians and what were they? They were giants. And there are even some writers in the uh, first few centuries AD that wrote that the Titans were those giants from the days of old. They were from what was talked about in the scriptures, you know, all the whole, the whole time. So there's that. Um, I don't know if you followed uh, people like this, H.P. Blavatsky, um, but she she's a horrible person honestly she's uh, pretty much a Satanist um, she's she believes in esotericism and she's dead now but she lived in the 1800s I believe and uh, early 1900s she was a eugenicist so she's a horrible person 
But this, The Secret Doctrine, is a compilation of her writings and understandings from ancient writings from all over the East and Middle East. Uh, you know, it's got stuff from the Bhagavad Gita in it, the Indian culture, from the, you know, the monks and uh, the Buddhist monks and all that stuff. It's all compiled. And so she talks all about races of giant people and fallen angels because that was all through those cultures. It was all through the historical writings of pretty much every culture in the world. And so I just want to mention that. I've read that. Um, here's a book I got at the used bookstore, Giants, uh, by Roy Norville. And this guy goes all over the world, and he not only, obviously, uh, as you see in that picture there, takes pictures of, or finds pictures of people that were giant, even in modern times, but then he explores different places on Earth where, again, as I mentioned, they're megalithic structures where uh, the, the materials used to build the structures and the way in which it was done is something that we can't even reproduce now because we don't have the strength, we don't have the size, we don't have the tool sets required to be able to do these kinds of things. However, if you had a race of people that were between 15 and 18 feet tall, then you probably would not have much problem lifting these stones upon one another and building these structures. But anyway, this is another book. I mean, shoot, there's a hundred thousand books out there. This is the best one I've ever read. Now this one by Jim Vieira, Hugh Newman, is Giants on the Record. It is, it is just as it shows on the cover here, it is about the Americas generally, but it is article after article that they scrape through tons of microfiches and libraries and books and newspaper clippings from the late 1800s and the early 1900s. They, they spent years on this stuff, and this is just story after story of people and who either built houses in New England and then dug up bones of of giant people with two, three rows of teeth, with six fingers, six toes on each hand and foot. I mean, people found skeletons that were 15 feet tall. It's ridiculous, but it's it's record after record of that kind of thing. And this is legitimate records. It is newspaper articles. It is historical records and, you know, obituaries and things like that. It is just mind-boggling. These guys you know, they have no agenda. They're just researchers. They're reporters. And uh, this is a great book if you're interested. But anyway, I, I've blurred, um, you know, just flew through a lot of stuff. Uh, and I hope this is helpful. I hope it gives you ideas on things that you want to study. I know that was what I like best about watching videos online is that I get ideas of things I need to dig into deeper. And this is uh, a topic that is very huge. And once you find out that it, once you realize that it's real and you start reading about it, it is just mind blowing. And it's almost like, you know, for me, it's like reading science fiction, but it's real. And so that adds to the excitement of reading about it. It truly did happen. That's why it's recorded in the scriptures, and that's why it's recorded in every culture around the world. So I encourage you, if you're interested at all by now, by the end of this video, that you dig into some of these references I'm going to give you in the description. If you liked the video, you like what I'm doing, like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, add the alert so you get the messages from when I post new stuff. And uh, that just helps me keep getting the word out and grow my audience so you guys can see more. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. God bless.